2019 Chemnitz family. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and this is the first video that I am filming in the new year. I am really excited to film this episode of the Die Pot PS series. This PS or Patreon special series is one where if you're a Chemnitz patron you can get early access and view these videos a month before I make them available to the public. So if you are interested in getting early access to videos like this one, uh, make sure you check out the Patreon link in the video description and iCard. In December, the Chemnitz patrons voted for me to do a gradient fade type set. And that is what we are gonna do today. Right here, I have three skeins of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% Superwash Merino. It is so soft and it dies like a dream. And I'm going to design three different colors that will work together for a progression that could be easily worked into a fade type project. I am really inspired by the colorway that I filmed for the December Chemnitz Dialog. Um, this was inspired by a beautiful winter evergreen scene. And on the skeins of yarn, I did sort of this little gradient. Um, where I have almost a semi-solid at one end, speckles in the middle, and then another color at the other end. And so while what I do today is not going to be exactly like this, I thought it would be fun to create sort of a semi-solid for one of them. Um, a base color with speckles from that semi-solid as a second color, and then um, maybe the base color with only a splattering of speckles as the third. Um, so at least this is my plan, but we'll see how the yarn speaks to us as we start playing with color. I am going to pre-soak the 300 grams of yarn um, in just plain tap water at room temperature for at least 30 minutes. In my dedicated steam pan, I have about, I think, 16 cups of water. I'm going to start off with some Dharma Acid dyes in the color Peacock Blue. This started off as a 1% stock solution, but clearly you can see that it is crashed out. We aren't really in a stock solution kind of place anymore. Um, but I know that it will dissolve um, with time. And so that is, I guess, one quarter cup. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a second quarter cup. Oof. Look at that beautiful sort of plume of color that happened in the pan. You can see all of this, um, all of the powder sort of droplets in there. Everything I'm using today is dedicated dye equipment. Um, I, so none of this is stuff that will be used for food. Now this is a lot of color and I'm not sure if you can tell, oh you can totally tell. There's still some particles left in there. I am okay with that. But now let's get the yarn and put it in. I have the 300 grams of pre-soaked yarn and I'm now going to add this into the dye bath. Now remember, we have no acid in here yet. Um, it's possible we might start soaking up some of the color, but with no heat and no acid, um, this should give us a shot at some kind of more semi-solid, closer to solid base. Now, with those particles that are in there, we might end up with some speckles, but I am okay with that. Um, actually, I'm not seeing any, but sort of my job right now is to get the fiber in and I am just trying to get the yarn to have access to the dye by using my hands. I thought I was filming and I guess I was not. I just added four tablespoons of white vinegar, sort of pouring it across in sections after turning on the heat and then I sort of mixed it up with my hands. Um, four tablespoons of vinegar might sound like a lot. But there are 16 cups of water, and so it's the same proportion of two tablespoons of vinegar per eight cups of water that I like to use a lot 
with this fiber type and using acid dyes. Now, I don't expect that it'll take too, too long for these colors to start to absorb. Oh, you can't even see that. Um, you can see that we are already starting to clear, but I do want to get this base color on, and it's a nice sort of medium blue. With half a cup of dye, I mean, if it were a proper 1% stock solution, which obviously it was not, then, you know, there would be about 1.2 grams of dye sort of in, in the pot. Uh, so about 0.4 grams per skein. But I'm not sure, you know, that's dependent on a true 1% stock solution, which, you know, this is messier. I do have reusable zip ties on all of the skeins so that way I can move and flip them around really, really easily. It has been 10 minutes and we're pretty much clear. We're not even that hot yet, but I am going to go ahead and remove all of this yarn of draining some of this water. You can see that dye bath is really, really clear. I am going to let our dye bath continue to heat up because now that we have our base blue, we're now going to go and dye each of these three skeins separately. Uh, so there's one thing immediately that ties them in together, but we're now going to go and try to create the set that will work wonderfully together. And then, now that I'm going to be moving into preparing these powders, for some speckling and mixing up some stocks for some immersion dyeing. Whenever I am dealing with the dry powders, I will be wearing this um, dust mask uh, so that way I don't risk inhaling any powders. I have three colors of acid dyes, Dharma Forest Green, uh, Jacquard Violet, and Jacquard Jet Black. And my plan is to use this forest green on one skein and do sort of a semi-solid. On the next, I want to do some heavy forest green speckles with maybe a few violet speckles thrown in. And then on the third one, I want just a few forest green speckles and heavier of the violet speckles, but still not as heavy as that second skein. As for the black, I think I want to add a few speckles of this onto our semi-solid. Maybe we'll see how things go. Unlike the other dust mask that I use sometimes, this respirator really does muffle my voice. So sometimes I use this, uh, I use one of these uh, more disposable face masks. The one I'm wearing today has filters that I can replace periodically. Go ahead and measure out, let's say, let's go for like a gram. And I need to change my mode. Okay, I did too big. <laughs> um, all right, so we've got about 2.6 grams. Even though I haven't dealt with any other powders yet, I don't believe in going back into stocks. I like to only go one direction because I don't want to risk contamination. I have about 250 grams of warm tap water. So first, I maybe added a little too much. I want to sort of taste this. This basically means getting all of the powder wet um, because we don't want it to get like stuck on the bottom. And we will be making about a 1% stock solution. I'm realizing I technically have not tried dissolving this yet. It's easier in general to dissolve acid dyes in uh, warm or hot water but I didn't have any boiling water, so I'm going with warm tap. And you can get a sense of how it is dissolving based on sort of the splash up on the sides. Um, and so I'm gonna keep slowly adding more and more water and stirring this until they're all mixed up. Now this is still the same can that I used before, and 
I want to grab one of our already blue skeins. Sort of add this in. So we've already got some beautiful blue tones in here. I'm just sort of spreading things out. We are, again, not in a low immersion situation by any stretch. Since we are done mixing the powder, I can actually take off the respirator so you guys can hear me a little better. Um, but I think that it mixes up really, really nicely. All right, I'm sort of making this up a little bit as I go along. Um, I'm starting with just shy of a quarter cup and I'm pouring it in and using my tongs to spread out that color a bit. Um, ooh. So what I can't tell is if I'm seeing, oh no, I am seeing some nice dark from it. Um, I couldn't tell initially if like it was dark from where the colors were hitting or what, but I could certainly add color into the pot first. Um, I'm just sort of going where um, this feels right. All right. This time I've got a second quarter cup. Really a quarter cup? Yeah. All right, add, add some of this color, and like as I'm adding it, I may not need that black speckles that I thought I might do. And so this is, doing it this way is giving me some control over the color. I'm setting aside the rest of that color I poured for a moment. Now, some of you are like, Rebecca, why are you moving it? Just leave it still. It's like I'm moving it because of the way I want the color to come together. Um, I want it to have sort of multiple tones throughout to be a little random. Um, but I also sort of want to have some color depth throughout. So I'm moving it to help the dyes get have access to more of this yarn. And you can see that it is binding um, relatively quickly. Um, it is not super hot in here yet. I'm moving the tie down and oh, this is pretty. If I had started on something that was white, um, I think that, you know, there would be um, even more contrast in here. Um, I'm going to add a little more in here, sort of wiggling, wiggling it through to give us some beautiful, beautiful depth throughout this yarn. There we go. Now, if this cup were not plastic, I would rinse it out directly in there. But since it is plastic, I don't want to do that. <laughs> we used about half a cup of our stock solution. Um, and so that is um, about 120 mils. And so, me, so therefore we got, you know, maybe about or a little over a gram of the dye that we mixed onto here. All right, but now I am going to let this sit for, I think five or 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes, and then we'll go on and start with our next color. All right, after 10 minutes, I'm gonna turn off the heat and I am going to remove the yarn. So again, we did not end up doing the black speckles that I thought I might do, but uh, depending on how the other two colors come out, we can always decide to go back and layer on some more color here um, later on. There's a tiny bit of color left in the pan. I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, and 
Uh, I think now I also need to remove some volume from this because if I want to speckle, I want to have a much lower volume. So I'm going to take a Pyrex cup and just sort of fish out some water into the sink. But here is our starting moment and I'm really excited to add a lot of intense green onto this blue. Rather than scooping out the water, it actually ended up being a little easier to sort of to pour the water out, save it in the Pyrex, and then add it back in. So we've got four cups of our original sort of um, dye bath that we had in here. And now I'm adding in one of our blue skeins to do the next color. Now, after thinking about it and as I was going on, I realized that um, I think you guys voted for a gradient set whereas I here am dyeing some kind of fade set. Technically there is a gradient in here as well, but I think I owe everybody a full-on gradient set, um, which I hope to do at another time. One nice thing about measuring out the dye and weighing it was that it gave me a sense of sort of how much color there is um, in a little bit of color. And that tells me that when I took this much powder out to do some speckling, this is way, way, way too much dye. Um, and now as I start speckling with this forest green color, I want to take this opportunity to give a shout out to some of my fiber patrons. Ada Lai, Christina Duquette, and Karen Siegel. And you'll see the names of some more of these patrons um, listed below. In addition to early access to cool videos like this, patrons get some really cool perks, such as advance notice of Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop restocks, behind the scenes sneak peeks, an exclusive newsletter, and more. But I think one of my favorite patron perks is that you guys all vote in a poll that really helps shape the direction of the videos that I create, not just for these Die Plot PS series, but also for Dye Plot Weekly in general. Sometimes people like to ask why I like to use my fingers for the speckling, why I don't, say, use like a dusting wand or something. And I really like the tactile control. Um, I was able to determine how much of each color I really wanted to add in each position and how I like having that control. Um, this is some of the violet, which to be honest, okay, that is coming through. Um, I pulled out a lot less. Okay, there we see some of that purple coming out. And got like a really light hand on this right now. I don't want to be as heavy. I just want some like hints of this purple around. We will need to flip this over. Um, but I wanted to sort of give this a little pop and oomph. And I think that this is all gonna pair together so, so, so nicely. I am a little curious about how quickly things are sort of binding. I do see a little purple in there. Okay, I should not top this too much yet. I'm gonna pop up the heat and sort of let things simmer on a bit. Um, I'm going to let it simmer and I'll pop back over in about five minutes. I feel like side one is pretty well done. And yep, that looks pretty well done to me. So now I'm going to flip this over um, so we can access the second side. And take care if you're going to stick your fingers in a warm pan. <laughs> I, um, you know, this isn't too hot for me, but, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Um, all right, I am actually pretty happy with this, but I do want to add some color onto the sides. We have like a nice balanced set. You will notice the water level is getting a bit low. I probably will want to add a little more water and acid when I start the next stage. But before I go in for some speckling, I am sort of drying off my hands with a towel um, because I was just touching the wet uh, fiber. 
And so here, I pulled up a lot. I'm gonna put some back in the cup. This is why also I go, um, why I'm not going out of the jar. The Dharma jar is wide enough, so I would be able to pinch out of that. Um, but I think as a personal preference, again, because I don't want to contaminate or get moisture into the stock, that's why I take an aliquot out. That was heavy. Um, so that way I can have that here. Do, do, do. Now, because I did aliquot these out, I could go back and forth between this spruce color, or sorry, forest green color, and the violet, but I do want to rinse my hands up in between. It's hard sometimes when you have a vision in your head, because you really want to try to hit that vision, but hopefully, hopefully we get something that we can be really happy with. Oops. Actually, someone in the Chemnitz Lab Facebook group had a great suggestion of when you have the leftover powders, sort of mix them together and then you can get a hodgepodge that breaks, which I think is brilliant and I absolutely intend to do. All right. I feel like it takes a little bit for this purpley warmth to come out. Um, once it does, it's pretty awesome. Ooh, now I'm getting excited for the third one. I'm not sure entirely what I want to do. Hmm. I wanted to zoom in so you could appreciate the character of this yarn, even if I think some of the brightness isn't coming through. Uh, I'm glad I did the blue base because that really makes that blue shine through. Otherwise, there would be a lot of white, and I didn't want the skeins to necessarily feel paler, I still wanted them to feel pigmented and beautiful. Um, and I think that this will pair really, really greatly with that semi-solid that I started with. I didn't necessarily need to start with the pale blue for the semi-solid, but in the off chance that I had some of it showing through, I wanted the undertone to be that same blue versus a white. The five minutes are up and let's see how we're doing. There's a tiny bit of color left, but I'm really, really happy with the balance on here. Um, there is, whew, yeah, that color is very much in the yarn. I'm trying to drain out as much of the water as I can, sort of wrapping it around here, because um, I would like to sort of, oh, actually, I can touch that. That isn't that hot, actually. That's kind of nice that I can sort of wring that out. And actually, since I want a little more liquid as I'm setting this aside. Ooh, that's beautiful. Um, I can also remove some of the liquid from our semi-solid. These are beautiful together. Um, and yeah, I feel like there's a lot of similarities and now I think I do want to go in with these two colors, maybe bring that purple in, maybe go a little heavier on that purple shade, but really just have a hint of this forest green color. And I do want some of the blue to still show beneath. I started to walk over with the dye when I had not yet added the yarn into the dye bath. Um, and so here's a third blue skein. Da -da -da. Right. Now, after I put it in, I'm sort of shaking it out to help sort of get some good coverage all over. All right. Now, I want to make sure I go very sparingly here. 
So I'm starting with the green. So I don't want to overdo it. I'm just letting some pops of this come out. Some lighter, lighter specks. I want a little more. But I want this to feel a lot less green, but still definitely have that color in there um, because it is very much part of that set. There's some purple. Now, you might also notice, I guess I didn't talk about the fact that I am mixing brands here. I am using both um, a jacquard color and a dharma color, mainly because that's what I had open and available, but there's no reason why um, you can't mix brands. Like if one brand has a color you like more, obviously you should go for it. Now, I definitely could have been a little more even with like the purple and green speckles on the middle one and then done like a semi-solid purple for the other end. But I sort of wanted to continue this speckled moment um, and just increase the amount of purple. I'm now going to reduce the heat a bit, set a timer for five minutes, and then we will come back. But you know, I think that our green moment, you know, I think that we've got something that is going to be really, really cool. And especially if you sort of mix them together as you transition through a project, I think we've got something really, really cool happening. All right, it's been five minutes and there's a little bit of color left in there, but most of it is in fact in our yarn. Um, let's see if I can, yeah, I still can comfortably touch what is going on in here. Ah, comfortably might be a bit of an overstatement, but I can reasonably touch what is going on in here. All right, and let's shake it a bit so we can get things to spread out. Um, yeah, so we can work on this other side. All right, let's go in with our hint. I'm taking up dye and sort of letting it fall in the cup so I can be a little sparing, not too sparing. Still want some of these green moments. Oop, All right. It's sort of funny because when you take out too much dye, it's a lot easier to pinch and speckle. Um, but then it's also dangerous and you can end up with an evil fairy type moment. Um, which is great if you want an evil fairy to come and sort of bless your fiber with all of the evil tood. But... <laughs> I think the thing for me that's harder about this purple is that when you first speckle it, you don't see those purple tones. Um, when you first add it in, it looks very black almost, uh, which is a little disconcerting. But sort of like as you know, as it starts to dissolve, then that's when you see those purple moments. <laughs> I'm going a little heavier on the purple this time because I do want to make sure that this feels like a different but related colorway from the last game. There we go. I may end up deciding to go through and add more purple onto the other side one more time, but right now I am pretty happy. And so now I'm going to let this sit for five minutes. All right, I'm pretty excited by this purple moment. I'm gonna flip it back over and see how I'm feeling about it as I like try to soak up that residual color. 
and I'm actually feeling pretty good. I do think, okay, that was the, uh, I might want a tiny bit more purple in some areas. Uh, frequently, I think twice can be fine. I think on the river side, I decided I wanted to up the purple moment um, for this yarn. Uh, so there's a few areas in here where I do want to go in and add some more, just a tint more purple. Mask back on, and here we go. I wanted to zoom in just so you guys could see sort of the, the colors bloom a bit and how they look so dark when you first put them on. And then you really do see the warmth of this purple shade come out. In areas where it hits the water first, you see the color spread more and you get more speckles where it um, hits the yarn before the water. But I feel like I've gotten so close to exactly what I wanted here, so I am very, very excited. Um, and, you know, we got just a bit more purple onto this yarn. I'm going to go let this sit for five more minutes, and then we'll pull it out and take a look at our set. All right, let's see how we did. There is a hint of color left. I have a feeling that by swishing the yarn through the pan that we will be picking up those remaining hints of color. I'm now going to turn off the heat and using my tongs sort of like bring it through. But yeah, I'm pretty excited with how this has come around. All right, here is our last friend and here my friends is our set and I think that this is pretty awesome we start with a semi-solid green go through a blue shade with heavy speckles and then go through sort of more of a blurple color that has um, speckles but also like heavier purple as a whole um, I now need to let this cool completely so I can wash it here is our fade set. If you look at it all together, you can see the similarities, but ooh, that is just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And you can see how these nylon zip ties did take up some color as well. But as saturated as all this yarn is, it looks like all the color is in there. Um, I'm not using 100% cool water. I'm using some lukewarm water because it's really cold outside and in the winter in Massachusetts, cold water is really cold. I'm now adding some clear dish soap. Um, this is what I like to do for like a bleeding test. Now if we're going to see color come out, this is when we're going to see it happen. And I'm not seeing any color come out. So I'm now going to rinse out the soap. Hang the yarn to dry, and then we'll talk about this project. I twisted all three of these yarns together into this mega skein, and they work beautifully. And I think that they you could really create something amazing using all three of these skeins. If I am going to be perfectly honest, the reason why I first purchased a 20 pack of Knit Pick Swish DK is that I wanted to create a Find Your Fade cardigan for myself but I wanted to design just the perfect colors to fade together. And I mean, I've clearly gotten no closer to that project or else you would have seen a video already, but doing this exercise has me really thinking about that and thinking about dyeing a sweater's worth of yarn for myself because I have not knit a sweater for myself in goodness, about five years now. Anyway, these colors work together amazingly well. In terms of the set, I almost wish that instead of a semi-solid for that first green, I did something a little more speckly. 
I know I could have gone back over that green and added some other speckles on top of it. I think it works with the other colors really, really well, but maybe, or maybe for the third one, I should have done like a pale purple with the greens on top. I think that these three still fade together amazingly well. Uh, I just, you know, I need to think about what it is on my true perfect fade that I'm willing to spend, you know, hundreds of hours on to make the sweater, what kind of colorway I would like to create. But certainly, I mean, this is a little close. <laughs> I really enjoyed the exercise of trying to dye yarns that would work well together, um, but also clearly not be exactly the same. You could do things that the differences are just sort of microscopic and subtle. But clearly looking at this, these are three different yarns. Um, and I think that you could mix either of the two speckled ones with the semi-solid and get a good amount of contrast. The contrast between these two is a lot more subtle, which means that these two would fade together extremely, extremely easily. But I don't know, I like the idea of potentially having some kind of triangular shawl or using this darker green as a border for something that fades between the two of these. Uh, I feel like that there's just a lot that you could do with this. Going in a little closer, I think that with, especially with this superwash yarn, my speckles could have been sharper. And I think that they would have been if I had increased my acid concentration a little bit more. Nevertheless, I'm loving, loving the effect that we got with some more of this halo from the purple. These two skeins feel very, very similar, even zoomed in. But when they are, you know, in real life next to each other, you can really feel the differences. And, oh, I'm excited. Patrons, here is a little sneak peek to a full gradient set that will be featured in an episode of Dye Pot Weekly shortly. I also think this was a really fun way to create a semi-solid yarn by layering the colors in this way. Uh, I don't know, I'm just really, really happy with how that color turned out. What would you do differently? Let me know in the comments. Uh, I intend to list this eventually in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store as a set. Um, you can find a shop link in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you would like to get early access to the latest episode of the Dye Pot PS series, then you should become an official Chemnitz patron. Uh, you can find a link to the Patreon in the video description and the iCard. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, give the video a like, and once again, leave a comment. I really look forward to hearing your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.